and welcome to our second episode in the Brand Bewitchery series as I take you through each chapter of my guidebook to help you wield the story cycle system to craft spellbinding stories for your brand. I'm Park Howell, host of The Business of Story, and last week we explored chapter one of Brand Bewitchery called Backstory, where you defined your number one position in the marketplace. Today, you will learn about the second step in the story cycle called Heroes, how to understand your customers to build a tribe. Remember, you are not at the center of your brand story, your customers are. They are the hero of this journey. When business sales and marketing leaders go through my Business of Story Mastery courses, two major paradigm shifts happen to make their storytelling more effective and way more persuasive. The first shift is that your stories are not about what you make, but what you make happen in your customer's life. Look, prospects actually don't care about your widget. They don't care about your fancy product or your high-end service offering. Nope. Those are a dime a dozen. What they do care about is how their life will be better because of your unique product or service. Because here's the problem. When you focus on your offering, you are essentially just talking about yourself. Few people care about that story. So don't tell stories about what you make, but what you make happen in people's lives. This leads me to the second major paradigm shift, and that is that you and your brand are not at the center of your story. Your customer is. They are the hero on this journey with you. You and your brand play the way more important role of mentor or guide. That's why today's episode, my reading of chapter two from Brand Bewitchery, is so important because it will show you how to use the story cycle system to craft vivid customer personas so that you can easily invite them into your story. Your story that is actually about them. Let's begin. Chapter two, heroes, how to understand your customers to build a tribe. Quote, I always like to think of the audience when I'm directing because I am the audience, end quote, said Steven Spielberg. Who are you for? Narcissus was a brave hunter and unabashedly handsome. One day he was walking in the forest when the mountain nymph Echo saw him and fell deeply in love. Narcissus felt the presence of Echo and called out, Who's there? Echo, in hiding, repeated, Who's there? This exchange went on for days, which intrigued and, as you might imagine, slightly annoyed Narcissus. Then one day, the shy Echo revealed herself and expressed her love for him, but Narcissus rejected her outright. She fled, embarrassed and heartbroken, spending the rest of her life in lonely glens until nothing but a distant Echo remained of her. Nemesis, the goddess of revenge, learned of Echo's slight and set out to punish Narcissus for his callousness. Nemesis lured him to a pool where he was greeted by his magnificent reflection. Transfixed by his image, Narcissus sat by the pool for days staring at himself. When he realized his love could never be achieved, he committed suicide. The lesson found in the story of Narcissus is this. Don't fall prey to your ego. Selfies, for instance, can be fun and are often intoxicating, but they can reflect poorly on you, too. Your nemesis might turn your unflattering pick on you, making it viral, echoing forever through the glens of the Internet. This is not so much a cautionary tale for self-centered social media use as it is a reminder that you and your brand are not the focus of your story. Your audiences are. When brands are too self-absorbed, gazing at their own presumed beauty instead of empathizing with and appreciating the humanity of their audiences, the goddess of revenge takes her toll. Morale sags. Customer engagement vanishes. People care less about your self-absorbed brand. Harsh, huh? So look in the mirror and ask yourself, 
How transfixed are you on your customers? Think about it a bit and then answer this question. I am for who? What did your answer reveal? You may be like most readers and arrived at a number of different audiences. It's normal to feel like you want to be all things to all people. It seems safe, but it's dangerous. Because if you try to be all things to all people, you become meaningless to most. Just as in chapter one, when you declared your number one position in the marketplace to begin clarifying your story, you now need to be singularly focused on your number one audience. Once you've identified them, the rest of your audiences become more focused because they all share a similar wish and want that you and your brand fulfill. It's worth repeating here that this book uses the terms customers and audiences interchangeably. Because if you're sharing a story, you're selling something. Your wit, experience, insight, product, service, internal initiative, getting your kid to eat their peas, etc. So every audience is a customer, and every customer is an audience. And here's the most important part of audiences and customers. They are at the center of your brand story, not you or your brand. It's just like the hero's journey. Every story built on this framework has a central character with a sidekick who helps them achieve what they want on their journey. You, my friend, are the Obi-Wan Kenobi to their Luke Skywalker, or Glinda, the Good Witch of the North, to their Dorothy. So how do I answer the question above? Well, at the Business of Story, we are for you if you appreciate the power of storytelling to enroll your people in a common mission, align them with a focused vision, inspire their contributions, and build trust in a journey they can all live into and prosper from. By live into, I mean a narrative you can embrace with all of your heart and soul that is true to you and your journey in life. You, our customer, are the storytelling herald within your organization, but you must overcome the threshold guardians of doubt, indecision, and indifference to propel your people and your career forward. Therefore, we teach the applied science and bewitchery of storytelling to help you nudge the world in any direction you choose. To make your story work, you as the storyteller must possess an unwavering understanding of and empathy for your customers. Your power comes from telling your stories from your audience's perspective, helping them make your story their story. But first, you must overcome your own navel-gazing to make this story transmutation work. Spoiler alert, nine out of ten times when I ask an executive who is the hero of their brand story, they will say the brand is the hero. It's not. At the heart of every brand story are your audiences of customers, employees, shareholders, stakeholders, vendors, the community you serve, etc., depending on who your story is for. Your brand is the beneficiary of this process. It is not the hero. However, you play a vastly more important role as mentor or guide, which we'll explain more in Chapter 6, Mentor. Let's take a look at how Coca-Cola used the story cycle system to double its fleet's fuel efficiency by focusing on the true heroes of their smart driver, Eco-Driving Initiative. One goal, many audiences. Eco-Driving Solutions, a Phoenix-based provider of eco-driving training programs, was launching its national brand story that we crafted with the StoryCycle system. Impressively, the first customer for its online and classroom training curriculum for fleet truck drivers was Coca-Cola and its 60,000-plus fleet of drivers. Coca-Cola hired Eco-Driving Solutions as the content experts for its internally branded Smart Driver program. And Eco-Driving Solutions hired us to design the story strategy for its launch in the Coca-Cola fleet. Our challenge was to sell a planet-friendly driver training program to road-worn truck drivers who were focused on meeting demanding delivery schedules and keeping their vehicles up and running. 
Given the divisiveness of ecological issues, from callous attitudes about carbon emissions to what some call the uncertain science behind global warming, to controversial images such as dog paddling polar bears, we knew it might be difficult to get the truck drivers, by nature an independent-minded lot, behind a program that they could view as just another sorry attempt to save the planet. We knew that to make this work, we had to craft and tell the initiative's brand story from behind their steering wheels, not from our passenger seat. We had to place the truck drivers at the center of the story and make them the heroes. If you visit the Eco Driving Solutions website, you won't find images of fluffy bunny rabbits, green grass, blue skies, or leafy logos. Instead, we built a brand archetype that speaks directly to the typical fleet owner's interest in growing revenue, reducing risk, and enhancing their brand. We've learned that selling sustainability is not about the environmental outcomes, but the business outcomes. Saving our planet and therefore our collective ass is simply added value. With Coca-Cola, we absolutely had to connect with the sentiments of their truck drivers, the heroes of Coca-Cola's smart driver story. Their primary interest was efficiency, safety, and a little competition. We use the Story Cycle System Customer Persona Guide, you'll read about this powerful technique later in the chapter, as an interview template to get to know our audiences. What we found from our research is that Coca-Cola's fleet of drivers had four primary motivators. One, they were committed to helping their company, Coca-Cola, tune up its operations. Two, their independent nature inspired them to be the best and safest drivers they could be. Three, since each driver was part of a regional team, they exhibited a competitive spirit to outperform other company fleet divisions, not to mention their fellow drivers. And four, they expressed a sense of national pride to do their part to help America reduce its reliance on foreign oil. We captured the insights we gleaned about Coca-Cola's fleet drivers and drafted a customer persona we called Chuck. Here's the profile we wrote to describe him. Chuck is proud to have been driving for his company for nearly 10 years. He's 34 years old and his Midwest upbringing helps him appreciate what it means to work for a solid company. He's not the rah-rah cheerleader type. Chuck is just extremely happy to be contributing to his team in his own personal way, and he knows the company appreciates his efforts. Chuck believes in fairness, honesty, and in an America that his father always said was the finest country in the world. He's indifferent to climate change because he's not really certain who to believe. He finds global warming to be a political subject rather than a real one. Chuck is saddened at America's involvement in the Middle East, but figures we have to protect our interests and abdicates to the men and women in leadership who are, quote, smarter than he is, end quote, for such decisions. Although Chuck, the fleet driver, was the primary audience, you know, who the smart driver program was ultimately for, we identified eight other internal audiences who needed to buy into the program, and we pinpointed what each uniquely cared about relative to the Smart Driver Initiative. And then we told the story from their perspective, which now placed them at the center of the story. Here's what we found, which is pretty standard across all corporate entities. Fleet managers want to reduce fuel and maintenance costs. Chief training officers want to implement a proven turnkey training program without tying up their own IT and training resources. Human resource directors want a new platform that engages employees and builds camaraderie. Directors of risk management want to sleep better at night because the eco-driving training results in safer drivers. Corporate sustainability officers want a measurable sustainability program they can promote to stakeholders that delivers real numbers on the company's reduced impact on the community and the planet. Chief marketing officers want to use the results of eco-driving training as a powerful way to strengthen their company's corporate social responsibility story. Chief financial officers want an immediate return on their investment in the forms of reduced fuel and maintenance costs. Chief executive officers want to be proud of the leadership role in their industry inherent in a program that positively impacts people, planet, and profits. 
It's worth repeating that Coca-Cola doubled its smart driver goals in the first few months of launching the initiative in 2010 because they presented a story that their fleet could buy into and prosper from. Coke focused on culture rather than compliance to make their smart driver program a hit. The Story Cycle System Overview of Coca-Cola's Smart Driver Program. Here's a quick look at the road ahead for you and the Story Cycle System. This is how it mapped out for Coca-Cola. You'll cover each of these steps at length in the chapters of this book. Step 1, Backstory. Coca-Cola launched an eco-driving training program called Smart Driver to reduce the carbon emissions of its fleet by 3%. 2. Heroes. Dedicated Coca-Cola fleet drivers and their staff, with secondary audiences in leadership, as described above. 3. Stakes. Drivers wish to help their company, community, and country and want an effective driving program to reduce their fuel consumption and ecological impact. 4. Disruption. Introducing a new internal initiative that is going to require them to drive differently. 5. Antagonists. Old habits die hard and the potential sentiment that the program seems like an intrusive backseat driver. 6. Mentor. Eco-driving solutions in Coca-Cola's new smart driver program. 7. Journey. Proven classroom in online eco-driving solutions training. 8. Victory. Coca-Cola doubled its fuel savings and reduced its carbon emissions in just the first few months of the program. 9. Moral. Pride in knowing how to make a positive impact in your job every day. 10. Ritual. Daily dedication to driving responsibly and being rewarded for it, even when they're at home with their families. Identifying your target audiences. Who you are for. Are we in agreement? You and your brand are not the heroes of this journey. Your audiences are. As the Coca-Cola case study demonstrates, they are at the center of your brand's stories. You are the story maker. They are your brand storytellers. You surprise and delight them by delivering on the promises you make in your brand stories. Then they become your most vocal advocates, sharing your story with their world. But that all begins by viewing them as the heroes. So make sure you understand, appreciate, and empathize with the journeys they're on and how they see the world and your brand's place in it. It's important because when you truly connect with your audiences, you can craft irresistible brand stories that turn engagement into enthusiasm, into evangelism, making your story their story. For instance, I've learned over the decade plus of using and teaching the story cycle system that I'm for you if you're a leader of a purpose-driven brand, whether it's your personal slash professional brand to grow your influence or your organizational brand to grow your enterprise and your people. Although many different kinds of people rely on the business of story, I focus my brand storytelling to attract the following three hero archetypes. They all have one thing in common. They possess at least a cursory knowledge of storytelling and appreciate its power to connect their brand on a primal human level with their customers. Each of these audiences now seeks a proven way to excel through the stories they tell. Audience number one, founder slash CEO of an emerging enterprise. You have founded a purpose-driven organization that has a proven business model generating up to $10 million in annual revenue. But your competition has taken notice and is encroaching on your business, causing confusion in the marketplace because you have not declared your clear brand differentiator. Regardless, you are still growing and urgently need to express your focus mission with your expanding workforce, something that will inspire them to pull together for a common cause. And perhaps most embarrassing, I've heard this a lot, your banker or investor recently asked you, what's your story? And you didn't have one. Sigh. Audience number two, director of branding, marketing, sales, or human resources. 
You are either a chief branding officer, director of marketing and sales, or human resources executive, which incidentally may be the toughest storytelling position of all if you have to sell your people on embracing diversity and inclusion. You want your people and their teams to buy into your brand of leadership and grow your external sales and marketing programs or internal employee initiatives. These are emerging enterprises within your organization, and the same approach to brand story strategy will work for you as well as it does for someone growing a brand per our first audience above. Audience number three, industrious executive. You are a middle management or C-level executive who has garnered success in your 20-plus years in your industry, and you want to grow your influence and results in the second stage of your career, either in your current position or with a new job. But you realize that you are up against stiff competition from colleagues and executives who have an equal or better curriculum vitae. Plus, you may have felt like you haven't hit your stride yet due to your lack of a focused story. You turn to Business of Stories resources to help you clarify your personal slash professional brand story to amplify your impact and simplify your life. So as you can see, I am for leaders of purpose-driven brands who believe in the power of storytelling to help them nudge the world in any direction they choose. I am for those who tell stories with purpose. They are my heroes. I encourage you to craft simple definitions of your top three audiences as I have above. Jack Handy, my favorite motivational guru from Saturday Night Live, yep, you read that right, said it best, quote, before you criticize someone, walk a mile in their shoes. That way, you'll be a mile from them and have their shoes, end quote. Actually, you're not criticizing, but characterizing. Who are your customers and what do they want from you? Creating Customer Personas Using the Story Cycle System The Story Cycle System, like the hero's journey, is totally meta. It's self-referential in that the same narrative framework is found on many levels. For instance, you're using it now to craft the foundational elements of your brand story. You can also use the Story Cycle System to guide your communications plan. You will even use it as a framework to create your individual story assets, including TV commercials, blog posts, videos, presentations, white papers, etc. The story cycle system is also a powerful guide to knowing and understanding your audiences by defining their characteristics. By using its 10-step system to craft their personas, you gain an appreciation for the journey your audience is on the stories they are telling themselves about your brand, your competition, and maybe even your industry. The goal is to line your story with their story. Use the following outline, which should be getting more familiar to you by now, to understand, appreciate, and empathize with your customers and the journey they're on relative to your brand offering. Then you will align your customers' journey points with the proper brand stories to communicate your value proposition and connect your shared values. Step one, backstory. Explain where your customer has been, where they are now, and where they want to go. Step two, heroes. Describe the demographic and psychographic attributes of your customer. Step three, stakes. Determine what is important to them, both personally and professionally, and consider how your offering will help them achieve what they want. Consider where your audience is along the adoptive curve scale developed by the tech industry. Are they an innovator, early adopter, early majority, late majority, or laggard? Step four, disruption. Detail what has changed or is going to change in your customer's environment to turn their ordinary world upside down and make your offering more relevant than ever. Step five, antagonists. Identify who and what stands in their way, including their own internal demons, of adopting, using, and evangelizing your offering. Step six, mentor. Outline how your brand's position, promise, personality, and purpose will help your customers achieve what they want. Step seven, journey. Portray how you anticipate the journey will unfold for your audience, how they will overcome their obstacles, what short-term success looks like, and how they will be empowered by your offering. Step eight, victory. 
Describe what initial success, meaning the adoption of your offering, looks like through the eyes of your customer. Step nine, moral. Define what your customer values and how they will connect with the shared values of your brand. And step 10, ritual. Describe how, through ritual and evangelism, your customer will interact with your offering now and in the future to create a lasting brand bond. Business of Story audience persona, founder slash CEO of a challenger brand. Let me provide you a concrete example from my own business of how to use the steps above to craft a customer slash audience persona. I encourage you to work with what you know now about your customer, but it's okay to even make some assumptions about their circumstances and behaviors that you will test later in the story cycle system. You can always hone these personas as your brand story becomes clearer to you. We were working with the founder of an emerging enterprise who needed us to help him in the following ways. Backstory. Sam is the founder and CEO of a seven-year-old healthcare technology firm that he started in a co-working space. The company has grown to 30 employees and is now headquartered in his own 10,000-square-foot building. Business has been brisk because they have done a good job focusing on expert delivery of both their product and customer service. But as they emerge as a mid-market tech company, Sam knows that the organization has neglected to define its brand story and align it with its employees and customers. Therefore, he feels urgency to create a brand narrative to spur the next level of growth for his organization. Heroes. Sam is 47 years old, married, and the father of two kids active in sports who also have reluctant piano lessons scheduled in, quote, because the arts are important, too, end quote. In fact, Sam believes computer coding is a blend of art and science that can unlock the potential of users. He is a driven entrepreneur who analyzes every business move and requires a lot of data and proof in his decision-making. He runs four times a week, meditates occasionally, and eats healthy food because he knows it's good for him, and he feels it's important to model healthy behavior throughout his organization and industry, as well as to his children. Stakes. While a focus on outstanding product delivery and fastidious customer service has led to growing sales, Sam feels the company is falling short because it has not clarified its brand story. Although an innovator on the adoptive curve scale in some areas of his operations, as well as in his personal buying habits, Sam is more of a late early adopter slash early majority person when investing in professional services for his company. For instance, he has just implemented leadership coaching after considering it for two years. He wishes to feel smart and optimistic and wants a powerful brand story that will align his team and create trust with his customers. Disruption. Sam knows international growth necessitates his company being more professional through all its advertising, marketing, and sales. But everyone in his organization seems to be telling their own story about the brand and its offering. While nose to the grindstone growth has been the norm for Sam and his company, he intuitively knows he needs to disrupt this routine by taking the time to unify the organization around a central brand story that everybody can buy into and prosper from. And it must be accurately and powerfully reflected through all of the company's advertising, inbound marketing, sales, and customer service. Antagonists. As an analyzer, Sam has difficulty getting out of his own way to make a decision. He needs proof and recommendations from others before he will invest. He is also concerned about the resources required to get his brand story straight, but he is starting to appreciate the importance of making the investment of time and money. Mentor. Demonstrating to Sam the epic growth clients have achieved through the story cycle system will be a critical factor for his decision to proceed. The systematic approach of the 10-step process with deliverables at each step demonstrating tangible progress will be important points of influence to his analytical mind. Plus, the combination of Hollywood storytelling coupled with brand marketing plays to his art sensibilities. Oh, and the ROI of storytelling is hugely important to him. Journey. Sam's learned about the Business of Story platform from a referral. 
He will adopt the program by first doing a one-on-one -on -one session to vet the story cycle system, which may mean attending a one-day workshop. He may also use some of the platform's free online storytelling tools to test the quality of the materials. He will then invite his leadership team into the process to develop the overall brand story because building consensus in his organization is profoundly important to Sam. Appreciation for the story cycle system will come following the workshop and he will be evangelizing it once his overall brand story is created. Victory. Sam will be inspired by the workshop and will look forward to getting his team involved in an outside process that he discovered and vetted for the company. We will celebrate the creation of the brand story by rolling it out to the organization with great fanfare. Our goal is to make Sam a vocal ambassador of the Business of Story platform and the story cycle process, which he will happily share with his peers and colleagues. Moral. Sam values a proven, intentional process that is an enchanting combination of art, science, and sales. A process that aligns his leadership, brand, employee, and customer stories to deliver real results for his organization and people in a timely fashion. Ritual. We will arm Sam with the story plans and tools to embed storytelling throughout his organization to assist in the growth of his people and enterprise while also providing the online portal of businessofstory.com for rich content around storytelling. Now it's your turn. Although you are for one kind of professional, you should prioritize your top three audiences and consider what they have in common. I know you probably have more than three important audiences to communicate with, but to make life simpler, please select your top three for this exercise. I found that what you learn by exploring these three audiences will be effective in connecting with the rest of the communities you serve. Now, craft your customer personas for each audience as described above, using the story cycle system to help you empathize with their wishes and wants. Strive to understand where they are on their journeys and identify how to connect with them in a meaningful way. Final thoughts. Is your brand story already becoming a bit clearer? In Chapter 1, you declared your number one position in the marketplace. In Campbell's Hero's journey, this is your ordinary world. You took your first decisive step out of being a commodity to your customers. And now in chapter two, you've identified who cares about your number one position, but defining who you are for, the central characters at the heart of your brand story. Next, in chapter three, you explore what's at stake for your audiences, what they emotionally wish for and physically want to invest in to fulfill that wish. It's only when you understand and appreciate what they wish for and want that you can trigger their will to act through the stories you tell which we'll cover in chapter four. So when you're ready, let's figure out the wishes you'll be granting. Additional resources. If you'd like a deeper dive into creating customer slash audience personas, visit businessofstory.com forward slash hero for these additional resources. Read volume two of the Business of Story online magazine, Who's the Hero in Your Brand Story? Listen to Ardath Alby on the Business of Story podcast, Who's your hero? Creating customer personas for your B2B marketing. And finally, watch my quick explanation on how to identify your number one audience at bit.ly forward slash story cycle dash hero. Story on activity. Do you want to get in tune with your audiences? This exercise will make you hyper-focused on them. Just fill out the following abridged story cycle system. I told you it was meta. <laughs> With one sentence answers and see how your offering and the people you are for come into clearer focus. For even greater insight, ask each of your team members to fill out this quick form so you can locate the trends and gaps in their collective interpretation of your brand's story and audiences. Number one, backstory. What do you do differently and more distinctively than anyone else? Two, heroes. Who cares about your brand and story? Three, stakes. What do they want relative to your offering? Four, disruption. Why do they want it? Five, antagonists. Why don't they already have it? Six, mentor. How are you equipped to help them get it? Seven, journey. What are you going to do for them? Eight, victory. 
What does success look like for them? Nine, moral. What does success feel like for them? Ten, ritual. How will you keep them coming back for more? Thank you for listening to this edition of The Business of Story. Please share this episode with anyone you know who would benefit by becoming a more confident and persuasive storyteller. The theme music is composed by Darius Holbert. Marketing is handled by Marissa Hill. And the show is edited beautifully by Caden Howell. If I can help you and your team excel through the stories you tell, hit our contact page at businessofstory.com for information on in-person, virtual, and hybrid mastery courses, keynotes, and even do-it-yourself storytelling training. Please join us next week when we examine how storytelling is the jujitsu of business communications with Henner Gracie, author of The 32 Principles, Harnessing the Power of Jiu-Jitsu to Succeed in Business, Relationships, and Life. Until then, remember that the most potent story you will ever tell is the story you tell yourself. So make that epic. Thanks so much for listening.